Welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, where we discuss the financial challenges and opportunities facing medical professionals. In this podcast, we'll discuss a variety of financial topics that are important to physicians, such as retirement planning, investing, and estate planning. We will also interview experts in the financial services industry to get their insights on these topics. If you're a physician or a spouse of a physician, I encourage you to listen to this podcast. We will provide you with the information you need to make sense down financial decisions and achieve your financial goals. Here's your host, Brent Bowden, a financial coach and certified financial planning advisor with over 15 years of experience helping medical professionals achieve their financial goals. To learn more about Brent Bowden and his services, visit brentbowden.com. Hello and welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup podcast. I'm your host, Brent Bowden, and today we are going to be kicking off 2024 talking about financial wellness for medical professionals. As a medical professional, you dedicate your life to caring for others. So what about your own financial well-being? It's important that you also take care of your finances as much as you do for your patients. And sometimes the demanding schedules, the high-stress work environment of the medical field can really make it difficult to manage your finances effectively. But there are a few things that you can do to stay on top of those finances and achieve financial wellness and peace as well. So let's first talk about stress management. One of the most important things that you can do to prevent financial burnout or decision-making burnout is really being able to manage your, your stress. And stress can often lead to bad decisions, impulsive spending, sometimes lack of motivation to to really engage in the financial steps and planning that you need to make everything run smoothly. So how do we manage that? Let's just talk about five. There's there's probably a number of different things that you can do, um, but these are five that we see come up quite a bit that have, have often helped people kind of reduce their stress and be able to focus a little bit more on those financial topics that they need help with. One is exercise regularly. Just by getting, you know, 20, 30 minutes of exercise that's dedicated to helping relieve your stress can really help impact the decision-making and stress management. Obviously, getting enough sleep. In medical field, you are busy all the time, uh, and being able to, to dedicate the time you need to get sleep is helpful. Practicing mindfulness or meditation can be another way to help reduce stress. Spending time with family, loved ones, uh, your kids can often be a time to, to be able to break the monotony of every day and relax a little bit and just think about the ones that, that you love in front of you. And then taking small periodic breaks throughout the day can also help reduce that stress. So by taking just a few of those regular steps, obviously, as we kick off 2024, making a few adjustments to our daily schedule can really be impactful in reducing stress and kind of setting our stage for, for the new year ahead. Another factor that we see pop up quite a bit is time management. So medical professionals, obviously, you're juggling long hours, unpredictable schedules, administrative tasks you still have to get done, and it can really be difficult to find the time to manage your finances when you get home, you're tired, you're stressed, uh, to do that effectively. So one of the things that we help a lot of our professionals with is just prioritizing the small tasks each day that you can get done or each month. And, and setting some realistic goals. So by setting those goals and knowing exactly how to achieve them, you can effectively create more time in your day to get those things done. Another thing that we like to do a lot is use technology to help streamline as many of those financial processes and decision-making and, and automate them so that you don't have to make them on a daily or monthly basis. And then when you have the opportunity to delegate tasks, to a professional that you you tr- know and trust, sometimes that can be really effective and cost efficient, even uh, both on your time and your money to be able to, to outsource those. So just four quick ways to kind of help with your time management. Another financial wellness thing that we always like to, to reset our goals and decisions for the year is just doing kind of a mini financial plan. And by taking a couple of these steps, it can really help set you up for the year ahead and, and many years to come. So we talked already about setting some financial goals 
and being able to prioritize kind of the tasks of achieving those. Some of those may be long-term goals, though, and it, it may not be something you can affect immediately. But knowing what those goals are and how you're trying to get there can be helpful. We've also talked about in the past, uh, you can look back, I think, one of the early episodes about behavioral finance and being able to make good financial decisions that are values-based for what you're trying to accomplish. It's a good way to look at your financial goals as you move into the new year. Are the decisions you're making about your finances really a reflection of yourself and your values financially? Another one is to take this time to create or review your budget. Uh, a lot of times we get into a, a spending mode where we think we have everything pretty automated, but if we really look at it, there may be some things we can cut out, some things we spent too much on, um, and really understanding where those dollars have gone over the last year, two years, uh, can really help us to reset that budget and know exactly where we're, we're headed in the future. Obviously, investing early and often, we've talked about a lot, and that is one way to be able to compound your interest over time and hit those financial goals that you've set. On the other side of that, uh, paying off high interest rate debts or school loans can be a, a burden and, and a stressful thing. And so being able to have a game plan and make that decision and small tasks to get those paid off quickly can a, a lot of times alleviate some of the, the stress and really put you on a, plat, a path to better financial planning, better financial outcomes. And so taking just a few of those, maybe some of those apply, maybe they don't. But the ones that do and just having a game plan for them throughout the year can help you put you on your path to financial freedom. If you want to create that financial plan yourself, there's a number of tools you can do that out there. Um, the other option is obviously working with a financial advisor, somebody that is understanding of the medical community and, and your particular situations, but can maybe help you create more of a, a tailored approach to your specific needs. A couple other things that we look at from a financial wellness uh, position is you can educate yourself about personal finance. Uh, certainly, if you're listening to this podcast already, you're, you're on your path. You can also pick up a copy of our book, The Physician's Financial Checkup. It has a lot of great tips, strategies uh, built in there, whether you listen to an audio book or an ebook or, or paperback. Some tips in there for where you are to meet you on your path to financial freedom. We always suggest taking advantage of employer-sponsored retirement plans making sure that you've adjusted for 2024, making those additions and contributions really count for your future retirement needs. But also looking to consider contributing to potentially IRAs or Roth IRAs or even a non-qualified account outside of work can help add additional buckets of opportunity for you in retirement to have those, those funds that you're going to need. Obviously, uh, we're a big advocate of creating some sort of an emergency fund Rule of thumb is three to six months, be able to have that on hand so that you have some assets should something pop up that you can easily grab. Right now, there's some great high net worth uh, bank accounts out there. So a lot of the digital ones typically have a little higher rates. Even some of the local banks have seen some great rates lately. So make sure that you're getting an equivalent market rate, you know, that two, three, four, five percent right now is is on the upswing. Uh, obviously, if the, the Fed changes rates this year, those may be coming down a little bit. But being cognizant of getting the best uh, yield that you can on this. And then when you need it, get professional help. If it's just setting up that financial plan and giving you some, some tidbits, some topics, some recommendations to know exactly where you're going, maybe one piece of the puzzle and allow you to, to bounce some ideas off of somebody, or maybe you need a little bit more holistic approach, somebody who's going to help you manage your ongoing wealth needs and services uh, and, and be a real advocate for you in the long term. Whichever way you want to approach it, just by taking that step and, and reaching out, finding a, uh, somebody to work with, and really take a lot of that burden and stress off of you and put you on a path to financial success this year. So obviously, financial wellness is a, is a very important part of our overall well-being. Whether it's health and uh, financial success, go hand in hand oftentimes. And by taking care of your finances, you can reduce your stress, improve your relationship with money, and be on that path to financial freedom. So whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting in your medical journey, maybe somewhere in the middle, just know that your financial health matters, and this is a great time to reset it. So implementing a few of these obviously is going to require some action on your part. Don't commit to taking 
huge steps to try to accomplish all of that in one day. Commit to taking small steps each day. Be intentional about your actions on that path to your financial goals. And remember, nobody's perfect. It's just about making progress each day. If you take a little step each day, you'll eventually get to where you want to go. Now, if you found today's episode helpful, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your colleagues, friends, or fellow medical professionals. The more that we empower each other, the stronger our financial wellness community becomes. So stay tuned for more actionable advice in our future episodes. And if you have specific topics that you'd like us to cover or questions you'd like to answer, reach out to us on social media or through the website. And remember, financial wellness is a journey. Yours is unique, but we're here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, take charge of your financial destiny. Remember, your financial wellness is an investment in your future. And we wish you prosperity and peace on the journey to financial freedom. Thanks for tuning in. And if you like this, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your colleagues. Thanks for listening to the Physician's Financial Checkup podcast with me, your host, Brent Bowden, certified financial planner for over 15 years, helping physicians on their financial journey to financial freedom. If you like the actionable strategies and tips that we've shared here on the podcast, subscribe now. And for even more guidance, you can pick up the Physician's Financial Checkup book, Available now in print, ebook, and audiobook. Look forward to helping you on your journey to financial freedom. Thank you for listening to the Physician Financial Checkup Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave a review. You can also find more information on brentbowden.com. The information contained in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial advice. The opinions expressed are solely those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of any other individual or organization. You should carefully consider your investment objectives, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment decisions. If you are seeking financial advice, you should consult with a qualified financial advisor who can assess your individual circumstances and needs.